I would now like to welcome to the stage Rob Sparrow from Monash University. So I believe that the, amongst the challenges raised by AI now are a philosophical challenge and a political challenge. And I'll try to say a little bit about each and how I think they're connected. The philosophical challenge is to better understand the nature of ethics and in particular what it, would machines to, what it means to talk about ethical AI. The political challenge is to sustain, indeed even to imagine, democracy when the design of these powerful technologies is increasingly the means whereby political power is exercised. Achieving a better understanding of the nature of ethics uh, is a key challenge because debates about ethical AI are characterised by an equivocation between uh, about who needs to be ethical. Is it the people who design AI who need to be ethical? Or do we need to be building ethics into the machines? Is it the machines themselves? And a significant proportion of both popular and academic discussion is concerned with the second of these possibilities. And I, I think that's a mistake. But that discussion is made plausible uh, by engineers and indeed by philosophers operating with an impoverished account of what it means to be ethical. If, we, if we're utilitarians, then ethics is a matter of performing complex calculations about which, ac which actions will maximise some good, such as human happiness. But machines could be better calculators than we are. If we're Kantians, then ethics is a matter of applying the rules in a moral rule book. And AI may eventually be capable of doing that better than us, at least more consistently than us. But is, if, as I've argued in a number of places, ethics is a matter of being properly responsive to the demands of human relationships, if, if our inspirations are Aristotle and Wittgenstein rather than Bentham and Kant, uh, then ethics is closely connected with our embodiment. And to be ethical is to behave and feel and react in certain ways that only creatures with a particular biology are capable of. And if I'm right in this, then machines can't be ethical. Now, why does this matter? It matters because talk of machines being ethical distracts us from the people who are really making the decisions that determine uh, the decisions that machines make and whose choices that we do need to be evaluating ethically. And in particular, it distracts us from the way in which the design of AI systems involves the exercise of political power, which brings us to the political challenge. To illustrate the nature of the political challenge, I'm going to ask you to entertain a small thought experiment. Imagine that a bearded Marxist revolutionary has hijacked a Fox News broadcast and appears on every television in the country waving an AK-47 and a manifesto. And in that manifesto, he says all and only the things that we hear about the impacts of AI. So he gets on television, he says his organisation is going to put 30% of the population out of work. It's going to censor the news that you read. It's going to determine who goes to prison. Uh, who gets a house to live in. It even, gets, uh, even determines who you get to meet and who you get to be friends with. Regrettably, he says, this will also require putting the entire population under extensive and permanent surveillance, and it will also involve me becoming fabulously wealthy. <laughs> so imagine how people would react uh, to, to that circumstance. Uh, I don't think anyone will say, fa you know, fabulous, give that man a TED talk. Uh, actually, what they'd, say, what they'd say, that's appalling. That's an appalling exercise in shaping our future without consulting us. But that's what we're being asked to accept when it comes to the introduction of AI. And what the experiment reveals is a general democratic deficit in our thinking about technological change. And this is, it's, it's technology and not just AI here. Moreover, it seems to me that three of our traditional solutions to the exercise of political power by private actors are, are, seem no longer to be adequate. Uh, consent, the notion that we can you know, resolve this through individual consent, fails due to the ubiquitous nature of these technologies. Uh, the idea that we can just ask the state to regulate uh, is problematised both by um, regulatory capture and the strong inter integration between the manufacturers, the designers and the state, uh, and also the hollowing out of the state in our current political circumstances. And unfortunately, socialism, the universal basic income, is threatened by the collapse of the social forces that might bring it about. So that, it seems to me, is the political challenge, to imagine new ways of returning power to citizens, uh, and it's a, not just an intellectual challenge, but a practical challenge. And I hope it's a challenge we will all take up.